So today we are going to verify Ohm's law, all right? For the first time here, we're going to see how we can carry out electricity practical. First, we'll connect uh, the circuits. We're hearing circuit, circuit, circuits. Like we know, circuit is the part where electric current flows. When you hear that circuit, what should come to your mind? In electricity practical, it's all about connecting wires are you following right they have the component of the electrical circuit which could include things like the ammeter the voltmeter the cell of course battery then the key we also talk about the uh, resistor so today friends we're going to show you how we carry out reading uh, from the ammeter and of course from the voltmeter it's just going to be a quick demonstration Okay, subsequent videos are going to show you how we connect the electrical circuit in the verification of Ohm's law. Sorry that for today we are not showing you how we carry out the connection. Like we promised, in subsequent videos, we'll show you how you go about connecting the apparatus. Please take a look at the apparatus. Okay, take a look at the apparatus. And uh, we are going to see how we carry out the experiment now. So for this experiment, the resistance we are using is resistance of 1 ohms. You can see our ammeter already connected. You can see our voltage. Don't mind the knife we've got on the table there. The knife was just used to cut the wires, you know, the connecting wires. And uh, <laughs> Okay, so don't be scared of uh, the knife now. Back to what we're talking about, you can see our circuit. This is the ammeter, all right? You can see A there. It has two scales. Mm -hmm. The scale showing a full deflection of 3. We also have the second scale that shows a full scale deflection of 5, 5 amps, okay? And then here, we have uh, the voltmeter. You can see the symbol. The lower scale, the scale below here, shows uh, 3 volts at full uh, scale deflection. The one on top shows 1 volt at full scale deflection. We'll tell you the meaning on why we have these uh, scales there. Of course, you have the negative terminal and 2 positive terminal for the ammeter. One is reading 3 ampere, the other is 5 ampere. Why do we have that? We'll tell you in subsequent videos. Coming to that of the voltmeter, the same thing, you could notice we have the negative terminal, we have two positive terminal. One of them is one volt, the other is three volt. Hey, just hold on. Why did we actually connect to that of three volt here? Don't worry, we'll tell you the reason next time. Eh? Just for now, our interest is to see how we actually carry out the reading of uh, the current that will be flowing through the ammeter and then the corresponding voltage. Remember, according to Ohm's law, current that flows through a conductor, we have the wires here, these are the conductors, you know, is directly proportional to the voltage connected across the resistor. This is the resistor, the value is 1 ohms, you can see that. You can see how we connected the voltage across the, resistant, the, the, the resistance, okay? You can see that. All right, so like we said uh, in subsequent video, we'll show you how we actually do the connection. Now, this is our key. Mm? At this point, the circuit is known as what? Close, uh, open circuit. Open circuit, all right? The circuit is known as open circuit because the key has not been closed. Now, nothing is moving here. So this cell is not working. Look at this cell. This is 3.0 volt cell. Each of them is 1.5. We used two of the batteries. So you watch what is going to happen now, right? We're going to do something. Let me get the key closed. To the ammeter and the voltmeter, let's watch what happens when we close the key. You have to ensure tight connection. And that is why you would see what we'll do now. So he's going to place his finger here to hold down the battery. Of course, we don't have battery case in here. Sorry about that. Subsequent video will provide that. Then he's going to close this key. Please, try to watch the ammeter and voltmeter. What will happen to this needle, all right? this need what will happen to them if they are going to deflect so close the circuit let's see what happens so watch just be watching the ammeter and the voltmeter reading did you take note of something the ammeter needle has moved the voltmeter needle has also moved so we're going to take the reading now i'm going to take the reading now so can you tell us the ammeter was the current flowing in the circuit now um 0 0.8 ampere 0.8 ampere you can all see it here 0.8 ampere all right and then what about the voltmeter reading 
um 1.1 volt good 1.1 volt friends can you see that 1.1 volt please take note we are using the larger scale the one under here okay like i said make sure you follow or subscribe to our youtube channel all right at the gmas 41 we are going to show you why we used this scale here the same thing with that of the current okay all right now remember the, the, the resistance that produced this reading is 1 ohms resistance. All right, friends, you, you see, when we use the, a 3 volt source of EMF with 1 ohms resistance, we got the current to be equal to 0 0.8 ampere and voltage to be 1.1 volt. Is that not so? Yes. Remember, what we are just trying to demonstrate for you, friend, is just a simple, you know, verification of Ohm's law. Because Ohm's law says that current is directly proportional to voltage. But hey, you want to be careful. You don't need to take for granted the part of the law that stated that provided that some conditions are kept constant. Something like the resistance. The resistance is meant to be constant in Ohm's law for current to be directly proportional to voltage. So this is what we did here now, right? We tried to reduce the value of what is related to the voltage. And in our electric circuit here, what is related to the voltage is this battery. Remember, we used two batteries in the first case, where we got current of 0 0.8 amps and voltage of 1.1 volt. So this time around, we reduced the battery to one, one of the battery. So the EMF has reduced. If EMF reduces, what would be the corresponding effect on the voltage reading? The voltmeter reading will also reduce. Remember, we kept the resistance constant. This is still one ohm's resistance. So we didn't change it. We just altered the voltage by reducing the value of the emf so let us now see decreasing this voltage the effect it will have on the current please complete the circuit by closing the key let's see watch the ammeter and the voltmeter reading now let's see you see the needles have deflected the needles deflected all right the needles deflected so what is the value of the current the ammeter reading is what um 0 0.5 0 0.5 ampere friends at home please remember when we use three volt source battery all right we got current to be 0 0.8 this time around is 0 0.5 ampere please what about the voltmeter reading um 0 0.7 0 0.7 as against 1.1 we got initially so do you see something here? The current dropped and the voltage also what dropped. The first time we used 3 volts source of EMF, the current was 0 0.8 ampere. Now we used just one cell, that is 1.5 volts, the ampere. So there is a reduction of 0 0.3 ampere. What about the voltmeter reading? This is 0 0.7. As against 1.1 volt we got, so you see a reduction of there about 0 0.4 uh, volts was lost. So this simply verifies Ohm's law that if you reduce voltage, current will also reduce. If you increase voltage, current will increase. Both of them are directly proportional. But as a reminder, we still want to say what should be kept constant? The resistance. The resistance must be kept constant. And of course, some other physical conditions like temperature. All right, so the last thing we would like to show you is this. Now, we have increased the source of EMF. The value now is 3.0. Now, remember that when the source of EMF, that is the electromotive force, the first experiment we showed you, all right, when the source of EMF was 3 volts, that is these two batteries, with a resistance of 1 ohms. This one is no longer 1 ohms. This was the resistance we used there. In that case. 1 ohms. This time around, we've chosen to increase the value of the resistance. 
Are you seeing that now, right? And then the source of EMF, we increase it again to three volts. We are trying to compare it with the value we got in the first experiment. Remember in that first experiment, the, 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 the battery was two. Okay, the battery was two. So the EMF was three volts in that case. Now, following Ohm's law, if you increase voltage, you expect the current to increase. Is that not so? But let us see what this 5 ohms resistance will do. Let's see what it will do. So watch as we have the key closed. Watch the ammeter and voltmeter reading. It's trying to deflect now and go. So we have it, it as deflected. Make sure you hold it straight on. Now, what's the value of the current? 0 0.3 ampere. 0 0.3 ampere. You can see that, right? The current decreased. If you take your mind back to the first experiment, the current in that case was 0 0.8 ampere when we used 1 ohms resistance. But in this case now, when we used 5 ohms resistance, even if the source of EMF we used were the same, which is 3 volts, you notice that the current dropped. Why? Because generally we know that resistance opposes what? The flow of current. I'm going to explain this theoretically next when we treat electricity. But until then, remember, for Ohm's law to hold, the resistance has to be kept constant. 